Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's give an applause to the Gabriel uh, praise team. Do you know, do we know God's love? It's through this beautiful praise. It was a truly touching praise. Through Hebrews 13, 11, 13 through 16, today I'll give the uh, message entitled, The True Life of a Sojourner. The message today, it tells us that the essence of our life is a sojourner life. So all saints, we have somewhere to go. There's a place we have to be at. There is a final destination of our life. On this earth that we're living on today, there's 7 billion people. And that's a number that's just way above our head. And of the many people, they invest many things in their life. And also they experience all the riches and the wealth of this world and they live towards the things of this earth. And many people, they don't have any interest in where we came from and where we go to. They all live, um, they were born once and they leave once. They always try to live as a fun and happy kind of life that is very worldly. However, in the Bible, it tells us that there is a destination that we have to go back to. This place that we're living on today is just a place that the sojourner stays on just temporarily. And if we don't realize that this world is somewhere that we temporarily stay for, then we lose our focus towards the destination and also, if we face a disease or death suddenly, then we can't prepare for those. And that is why, through the Word of God, we should understand truly where we must go to and also live a life of sojourner so that we can go toward the true home, which is the kingdom of heaven. From yesterday and today, we had the, the service for our elder Daniel Lee. And as he is going back to heaven, we realize how short our life is. And also we realize that there is a place, a home that we have to go back to. And as we were doing the farewell service, and as we are letting them return, as we are sending him off, we were comforting the remaining family, but also each of our saints we observe how this is a path we must go to as well. And also we realize that we have to live a life, life of faith. And that was one of the purpose of attending this service. Certainly, if you look at First Chronicles 29, 15, it says, For we are sojourners before thee and tenants as all of our fathers were. Our days on the earth are like a shadow and there is no hope. This is something we all know, but we must never forget this even at one moment. And through the message today, we must once again realize that we are sojourner and let us be saints who go towards the eternal home. First, the saints on this earth are sojourners who one day has to go back to our origin or our home. To all people, there is a, there's a home. Many people have their home in Seoul, Busan, America, Japan, or Colombia. We all have our home. Certainly, it is my home where it is uh, Hokkaido in Japan, and it looks like this. Certainly, we all think about our home and the beauty. We miss those. As we're living far away, there's a, there's a pain from living far away. And the people who are here should know how difficult it is to, and how sorrow, how much sorrow we feel from being far away from our home. And also this home is somewhere we were born and also a place where our ancestors were living for a long time. So to all things in 
all creation there is a home and there's a element that we try to go back to our home and people were born from dust so it is the principle that we must go back to dust as well and that is the principle of our us as a creation and that is why home is always a place of mis uh, longing and also it makes us uh, Go, want to go back home and we can see that by salmons salmons always go back to where they were born and they finish their life there and this is our this is the essence of our life as well us all people were born from pe formed from God and if you look at Genesis all the things were created by the Word of God but however the sinful men we sometimes forget about those the people who have sinned we don't know where we come from or where we go to, who our true parents are or who our true home is. However, when we believe in the Lord, uh, in Jesus, and if we become a saint who are reborn, we finally know where we come from, where we go to, and also we realize that our home is the kingdom of heaven. And that is why the saints on this earth, we should always look at the kingdom of heaven which is the, which is our home and we must live a life without forgetting that if you look at hebrews 11 which is the message today so many people so many um predecessors of our faith live as a sojourner or as a gentile in hebrews 11 13 all these died in faith without receiving the promises but having having seen them and having welcomed them in welcomed them from a distance and having confessed that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. Even our ancestor of faith, Abraham, he had opportunities to go back to his physical um, home. However, he loved the better home, which is the kingdom of heaven, and God prepared a city for him, which is in our um, text today in verse 15 and 16. Certainly, Abraham must have thought of his uh, home of flesh often, where he had a comfortable life. He must have remembered those. However, Abraham was looking for the better home. Rather than the things of the good things of this earth, he was going for the home that we have not seen yet, but we are promised, and he was living for that home. And that is why Abraham was able to live looking towards that home and he was living his best life in whatever situation he was in. And he was finally able to be in the bosom of God. And that is the essence, the secret behind walking with God. Looking towards the heaven which is our home, that is the secret to, living with, to walking with God. And what kind of place is this home? This home is where we meet our Father. In our text today, the word home is patris in Greek, which is derived from the word patel, which means father or parents. So, home is a place where our father is. Also, secondly, home is somewhere there's no death, sadness, or pain. In Revelation 24.1, it says, and he shall wipe away every tears from their eyes, and there shall be no, lo no longer be any death, there shall no longer be any mourning, or crying, or pain. The first things have passed away. So this place of eternal joy and eternal peace is our home. So we always have hope, and we can live a life of faith. There is a place where we can always be with our Father. And that is why we can live on this earth as a sojourner. So in Coloss Colossians 3, 1 through 2, it says, If then you have been raised up with Jesus with Christ, keep seeking the things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things on that things that are on earth. And as we listen to this message hundreds and thousands of times, we sometimes forget about this message. As we are living on this earth, we, we face many obstacles and we sometimes forget about the home in heaven. 
And also, sometimes we do too well on this earth and we forget about the heaven. So just like Abraham, we should always look towards the better home, which is the heaven. And we shouldn't be so attached to the things of this earth, but be always focused on God and live a life of sojourner and let us be saints like that. So secondly, what is a life that is a sojourner's life? First, it is a life that you spend your time wisely. As a sojourner, we realize how fast the time on this earth passes. If you look at James 4, 13 through 14, it says, Come now, you who say today or tomorrow we shall go to such and such a city and spend a year there and engage in businesses and make a profit. Yet you do not know what, will, what your life will be like tomorrow. You are just a vapor like that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. So it says, the sojourner's life is just like a fog that disappears. Even in Proverbs 27.1, it says, Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. When you are young, you don't really realize how fast the time passes. But as we are getting older, we realize how fast the time is. And that is why we compare our age to speed, where if I'm 50, it is like 50 miles per hour, 70, 70 miles per hour. I am still young, but we, I sometimes think that there is too little time in the 24 hours in a day. And sometimes I wish that maybe it would be better if a day was 30 hours, where I can sleep a little bit more and work a little bit more. Also, especially nowadays with COVID, we also experience how fast a year goes. In the Bible, it tells us our life is not long. If you look around us, we have many people who pass this earth without, regardless of their age. And Moses said in uh, Psalms 90.10, it says our life is 70 through 80 years. So the life on this earth, it may seem long, but it is a life that is just like a shadow that, on, that is only seen temporarily. And that is how fast life is. So today, we had the service for Daniel, Elder Daniel Lee today. And we see many of our um, brothers in faith and many of our saints as we are sending them off. As we look at how we are having that service, I received a lot of um, grace. I really realized how blessed life he lived. And as we are sending him off, we are sending him off in joy. And I was truly thankful. And also, it was a very blessed time. And I haven't seen this many times. So many people, as they are passing, I see that often in church. But in thanksgiving and in praises, we were sending him back to God. And I was very envious about that. Certainly, I don't really know the elder very well. However, he raised all of his children in faith and also left his inheritance of faith. And also, he was an example for our saints. And he was in church. He was praising in church. And he was very devoted to church. And it was a truly amazing scene. He met this word early in his life and he lived his entire life in word. And it is a truly amazing life. And all the remaining family were becoming one. And they were in faith and in thanksgiving. And in praises, they were sending him off. And it was a truly interesting sight. And our, um, uh, our saints, Lee, the two sons, they were singing in duet. And it is a song that the elder loved before. And he was really um, depending all of their life in God and they were giving him thanksgiving and I noticed how much of a life of sojourner our elder lived and also our saints 
as we are sending him off in peace and in joy, we, I realized how much of a life of sojourner we were living. So our life today is very short. So we must spend our time wisely and also try to be fruitful and try to leave an inheritance of faith. Our life is short, so whenever we have this time today, we should really spend this time wisely. So today, with the time that God gave us today, let us not waste it in vain, but also but use it in use it in thinking that it is a time that God let us borrow, and let us think how we can glorify God with this time that He gave us, and let us be saints who live a life like that. Secondly, sojourner does not get attached to the present in their life. So a sojourner's life is without attachment and without greed. Although they are devout to whatever duty that they are given at that time, but they are not attached to it and they're not like dying over it. All the things that we are doing today, it is just a preparation for tomorrow. And let us remember that and with that time that we are given today, make this worthwhile and let us live for the work of God. And that is a true uh, form of a uh, sojourner's life. When we think of a sojourner or a foreigner, you must have like a light weight or light luggage. Even for me, I don't know when I, when, when I would go back to Japan, so I always had a light luggage. Even when I was married, I didn't buy a lot of things. And I was saying, I don't know when I'm going to go back. So I always lived a light life. You know, whenever we go on like a trip and when we go to like a hotel, we go to a hotel, we live comfortable and we leave. Even if the TV is small, we don't buy a larger TV. Or even if the refrigerator is small, we don't buy a larger refrigerator. We will one day go back home. We will one day be going back home. So we just live in there for the time being and we leave. Similarly, we live on this earth for temporarily and we go back home. So we shouldn't have attachment or greed over the material things on this earth. So all the sojourners on this earth or in the Bible, how they lived this life was that they did not have any attachment or uh, regrets about this earth. They considered the place that we're living on, the earth that we're living on today, as a place that we just sleep over a night, like a hotel. And we didn't have any greed or attachment. And those are the life of a sojourner. In Ephesians 20, 4 22, it says, That is, that in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, which is being corrupt in accordance with the lust of the deceit. So even our saints here today, are we are only living here temporarily and we are going back home in the kingdom of heaven. And we shouldn't forget about this at even uh, for a second. No matter how much wealth and glory we have in this earth, we can't take any of those home. No matter how good of a college you go to, you can't boast about it. No matter how good of a career you have or how much money you make, you can't take any of those. But this doesn't mean that you shouldn't make any money or live half at, um, live um, unwillingly on this earth. But just don't live a life that is excessive, but always live towards the kingdom of heaven. So First Timothy six seventeen it says, instruct those who are rich in this in this present world, rich in this present world, not to be considered or to fix their hope on the uns uncertainty of riches, but on God who rich, richly su supplies us with all things to enjoy. So we shouldn't fix our hope on the uncertainty of riches, but always live towards God and live a life of thanksgiving. Lastly, our third point, sojourner should have a proper um, idea of uh, possession. In our life, we live in a space called world and time called the life. We are 
limited by the time and space. These are all the things that God created, and these are the possession of God. And as we are living as a sojourner, it is something that we are temporarily borrowing. So in First Chronicles twenty nine fourteen, it says, "But who am I, and who are my people, that we should be able to offer as generously as this? For all things from come from Thee, and from Thy hand we have given Thee." So all the things belong to God, and we just re return the things that we have received from God back to God. And it is, He is truly showing a humble self. But how are people? We always try to say that, oh, this is mine. And we always try to keep, our, keep it as our own. And it is a very sinful nature. And this is a greed, and this is arrogance. And this arrogance and this greed eventually leads us to death, and it says that in James 1.15. However, true saint or true sojourner is free from greed. When they when we have no greed in ourselves, we can truly give thanksgiving to God. And also we can look towards the kingdom of heaven in faith. If we have greed and attachment to this earth, we can't go to heaven. Secondly, it is someone who can give a absolute thanksgiving to God. No matter what we have or don't have, we can always th give thanksgiving to God without anger or tears. So we should always be in joy and always um, pray and always uh, give thanksgiving. That is a life of a uh, sojourner. And in Old Testament, this is a life of Job in Old Testament. And he was a person who lived a uh, life of sojourner in faith. In First Peter 2.11, it says, Beloved, I urge you as alien and strangers to abstain from fleshly lust, which wage war against the soul. We always listen, we hear this message in the Word of God, but it is truly difficult to keep this word. We all have greed as a people. But if you are a true sojourner, we should always put down all the things in life and always live towards God. And that is the path to going back to the kingdom of heaven. So we should let go of all the greed on this earth and also um, let Give this all back to the leave all this back to the providence of God and live a life of faith. So, in conclusion, sojourner is someone who obeys God in a fearful heart. To sojourner, time and um, lifetime is just a time that is to be used according to God's will, and it is an opportunity to search for God, and it is a tool that we use to serve God. The reason why He sent us to this earth today is for us to search back towards God and also be used as a tool to serve God. As we are living on this earth, we should also put our best forth, but it shouldn't. the purpose shouldn't be ourselves. We shouldn't be living for ourselves, but rather live for the, the will of God. That is the life that we, that Lord wants us um, saints of Evergreen Church to live. People always have greed over things that are excessive, and that's when they have, uh, they, that's when they grumble and they complain. And we also uh, point at others. However, saints are just people who are always in thanksgiving and in whatever they are given. In 1 Peter 1.17, it says, And if you address as Father the one who impartially judges according to each man's work, conduct yourselves in fear during the time of your stay. So the people who are living in fear towards God is the true sojourner. The sojourner can give thanks and praise, Lord, praise the Lord. And that kind of person can possess the kingdom of heaven. In Matthew 5, 5, 3, it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The people, people who are poor in spirit, those are the sojourners. They only have hope in the heavens and not on this earth. And we look towards all the things that he will give us in the heaven. Those are the people who are poor in spirit. 
So all the saints today, as you are living a sojourner's life, and as you are looking towards the kingdom of heaven, let us always live in a fear, in a fear towards God, and I live a life of faith, so that as you have seen until today, and also as we have seen from our ancestors of faith, let us walk that same path. And also, without any single one of us living on this earth, let us all return to the kingdom of heaven. And I pray this blessing upon all of us in the name of Jesus Christ. And let us pray. Our Lord, full of loving grace, we thank you. Today, you gave us this blessed word, and you allowed us to live a life of faith today. With the message today, message today let us be a so sojourner of faith on this earth, and not leave any hope on this earth, but al always have hope on the Lord, and always live in joy and in absolute thanksgiving, and live a life of a uh, faithful life, and be a sojourner who live a life like that. You said the sojourner does not have any greed. Let us put down all the greed of of our flesh, and also live a life that is pleasing towards you. And also, whether we live or die, let us always glorify Jesus Christ and always live a life centered in Jesus. And please guide us towards that kind of life. Also, at this time, in Thanksgiving, we give you this offering that we have prepared. Please remember all the hands that are giving. And as you have gave us all of these things, let us give this in Thanksgiving and in faith. And wherever this offering is used, let your glory be the only thing that I revealed. And we believe that you will answer all those things we have prayed for. And we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's glorify the Lord with our applause. And let us sing hymn number 450.